What is up, 8% Nation, the entire insurance nation that wants to succeed. I'm Cody Askins, and I'm here with Mr. Pete Fournier. What's up, brother? What's happening, Cody? How are you? Dude, I'm great, man. Dude, ever since I saw you, we didn't even know each other. I saw you on Facebook. You were doing some videos. Some agents were sharing your stuff. You were doing some, hey, I'm going to make 100K in 100 days. Come run with me. You know, I can. I want to I want to help agents. I want to teach agents. And I'm like, dude, I love this guy's energy, his enthusiasm. You know, I, so, so huge respect for what you're doing, man. I appreciate it, man. You as well. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that very much. So, so, so those that don't know Pete, Pete is, he, he's, he, he works with Sam Wolf, who's a speaker at the event. Good dude. We love Sam. Uh, also, Pete is one of the life mentors in Ryan Saradakis's TTC Facebook group, Tips, Tricks, and Closers, which you guys are going to have a booth at the event. Yeah. You're bringing a bunch of people to the event focused on having a ton of fun, man. For, for, those, that, for those that don't know Pete, number one, you got to follow the dude. I mean, his, 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 his energy, his creativity, his, his, his love for this industry uh, is strong. So strong. So, 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 so do me a favor, buddy. Why don't you tell everyone a little about you in general for those that maybe don't know you yet? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, again, Pete Fournier, uh, I am in the tips, tricks and closers group on Facebook as a mentor, me and Ryan Sarah Dak has go way back to our, uh, captive days at American income life back in the day where we all started, got some great training there. Um, but just a little bit about me. Um, I started in the industry as an intern for uh, what was then ING Financial back in the day, just making cold calls and stuff like that for uh, for two agents that were in the office, uh, making like, I think, 13, 14 bucks an hour, which in college I thought I was like loaded. Um, and then uh, one of my buddies actually interned for Northwestern Mutual. And I was like, oh, man, if I can make cold calls, I can uh, I could sell insurance. So I went there. I uh, got a lot of mentorship. They paid for my license, all that good stuff when you're 20 years old. Right? And being able to expense things is always good. And I uh, was there for about a year and a half, two years as an intern. Then moved to AIL and then eventually found uh, my permanent upline of the last five, five and a half years or so uh, with Sam Wolf. At that time, he was with Unique Underwriters and... Uh, so I went over to their IMO and didn't have much money um, being on a lower comp than, you know, the typical independent agent might be. Um, so I only had a few grand to really drop on my business, quote unquote. So what I started with was age leads and like mad old age leads, like three, four, five years old. Got a couple hundred of them and uh, I wrote 11,000 in my first four days of being in the field as an independent agent. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt, but I, I got it for, for our audience, man, in case they miss this. Yeah. Three, four, five year old aged life insurance leads. Yep. You wrote 11K in four days over a weekend. Yep. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday would be my field days. And they say 92% of insurance agents fail in this business. Right, right. So um, I preach age leads like most agents either have time or they have money. And A leads are the way to go. Brand new leads are the way to go. But if you can't afford them, don't drop the money unless you're comfortable. And anybody and everybody can write ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a weekend on age leads. At least that's my my view. Jeez, that's freaking crazy. Okay. And and then I think you were telling me before, as we've kind of gotten to know each other, you had an even bigger number in like your first 45 days, like the first month. Yeah, so I was able to drop uh, just under 25,000, 24, eight to be uh, exact on all old leads. Um, so for all those people in Ohio or Michigan, that's where I was at. So you're living in a gold mine if you live out there. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty good feeling to be able to drop uh, just under 25K in about 45 days. And those first two months really propelled my income. So that way I could afford brand new A leads after that. Yeah. Well, what, what, what was it about this industry that, that really, uh, who, who got you involved? Um, so one of my fraternity brothers, um, when he went to Northwestern Mutual, I think in like college, he might have been making like 30, 40,000 or something selling, you know, term policies to our buddies because no one has money in college. Yeah. Um, so I was like, man, I can do that. Like I'm a better salesperson than you are. 
Um, and <laughs> sorry, Nate, if you're watching this. Um, but uh, so we'd go out in the field together. We'd do a lot of joint work. And, uh, you know, I was seeing the dream from a lot of people in the office, Maseratis, $100,000 a month income, you know, $100,000 a year residuals. I was like, man, I'm hooked. And uh, I was never a nine to five person. Like I've been a commission based salesperson pretty much my entire working career. Um, so I think all those aspects really drew me into this industry and it's so much fun. Like um, I put out a video the other day where um, the reason I love the industry so much is that any single person could be a client. Like I could sell you right now. I could see the sale, the person next to me at the bar. I could sell the waiter at the restaurant. It doesn't matter. As long as you're insurable, you're a client, right? So, and not everybody has that capability. You could be the best salesperson in the world, but not everyone's in the market for like Bentley, right? So right. I think that aspect is one of the best parts about this industry. Wow. Wow. And, 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 and also you, you, you're focused on a lot, doing a lot of training and coaching and helping agents. You're making two or 300 grand a year part-time working. When you say part-time, what are we talking about? Probably like 15 or 20 hours a week in the field, I would say max. Um, I just don't have time for it. Granted, like any upline out there, if you're still actively writing, there's no reason not to go out during the week and for 15 hours make $10,000, you know? So always stay in the field at least a little bit uh, for those builders out there. But uh, yeah, I try to... Um, yep. That's really good for your whole team. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I always try to lead by example or at least lead from the front and uh, challenge my agents to compete with me. Uh, one for fun and two, because if you do, you're probably going to be making two or $300,000 a year. So there's no reason not to run with me, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So you mentioned, you mentioned run with me. What got you wanting to start this whole hundred K in a hundred days thing that you're like right in the middle of half halfway in the middle of? Yeah. So um, I had one month uh, probably like two or three years ago where I dropped like, I want to say 40 or fit in between 40 and $50,000 in issue paid business, which is always the most important number. I, you hear big numbers out there, but if it's not issue paid, who cares? Right. So it was in between 40 and 50 low forties. I think it was. And me and Ryan were talking about that month. One day we were just, you know, shooting the shit, whatever. And he kind of bet me that I couldn't write a hundred K in a hundred days, or we were saying how hard it would be to write a thousand dollars a day in premium for a hundred days average, you know? And I was like, I could probably do that. And he was like, so put it out there. So I did. <laughs> and uh, yeah. as I told you before, I'm a little bit behind, but I'm pretty much on pace. I think I'm down by like maybe four or 5,000, which I can make up in a weekend. But um, the key to it, which I thought was cool. And I posted a video on this the other day, if you follow my page, um, my first month I did it all off of referrals. So I was dro I dropped like 28, $30,000, uh, from referrals and then geared up for lead purchases. Um, not like I didn't have the money, but I was trying to show proof of concept for a new agent to go out there and, you know, people avoid friends and family like the plague. Sometimes they're your best network. So go sell some people that, you know, or referrals of those people get a bankroll and then start purchasing leads. So it wasn't necessarily about like me bragging of how great a closer I am, but a hundred thousand dollars in a hundred days, I don't care what contract level you're at, could be life changing, right? For an agent. Um, and I'm trying to do it in the most simple way possible. Um, so like no single premiums, I don't count those, no annuities. It's strictly like final expense, whole life, maybe some ULs or IULs, a mortgage protection term just straight up common life insurance. Straight up life, man. I love that, that that's good. That that's such a that's such a cool way. What was real what was a real valuable nugget about what you just said when you and Ryan were talking was how you came up with an idea that you knew would be valuable to the industry, that would help people. It, you know, and you didn't think about it. You're like, dude, if it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do. So let's just do it, you know. And I just love that. I love that mentality. I love that, you know, just 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 think about it and do it and go all in. Is that something that's kind of always been in your DNA? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I try to put it out there as much as humanly possible, whether it's with my team or the TTC group. And again, it's not to brag, but if I put something out there, I challenge myself and now it's public. So yeah. I'm going to rip it, you know? 
when yeah. you, when you set a goal and it's good to like write I write down goals you know every day I learn from Grant Cardone all the time write down your goals when you wake up and when you go to bed I have a 10x planner on my nightstand inside this but, is my uh, I love yeah this. man when uh, when you're writing it down that's all well and good but when you're affirming it or telling people about it one hopefully they think you're nuts and two you're putting it out there publicly. Um, and to be honest, like, even if I failed and wrote like 90,000, I don't think any newer agent is going to be pissed that they wrote 90,000 in a hundred days. Right. So, um, there was no real downside to putting right. it out there. Is, yep. is it, is, 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 it's always been true for me. Would you say it's true for you that, Hey, when I think of something and I don't add time and I just do it, I put it out there, especially publicly, it kind of forces you to the rise to the occasion. Am I right? Yeah, hundred percent. Because you don't have that crutch of saying, you know, oh well, maybe I'll add an extra two weeks and I'll write hundred k in one hundred and twenty days or whatever the case may. You know, um, and it it doesn't matter if you fail or not. You went for it, and if you failed, you failed successfully. Again, if you failed and and you missed your mark by ten, twenty, even thirty percent, you wrote seventy k in a hundred days. Not many agents can say they can do that, and that's extrapolated to, you know, 200, $250,000 a year in issue paid business. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's a whole yeah. lot, especially for an industry that, you know, supposedly known for a lot of people felon, man. And, and it's, uh, but it's, it's a good industry. We both love it. You can tell that. Uh, so yeah, man. your goals, maybe, maybe they're private. No, no. <laughs> Share one with me at least. I'm a big goal guy. I write my goals down every single morning. This morning I literally wrote it down. 10, 10, 18, wrote my goals down. I'm a big dude. I'm just, just literally, we sound so much alike. It's crazy. Sh share with this something. Yeah. Um, the, the most important one to me right now from a, uh, like a uh, business standpoint or issue paid business is I want $250,000 a month of issue paid business coming from my agency. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a goal that me and Sam talked about a couple months ago. But the key to it is, right, when you're writing down your goals, make them very exact, right? Hit it on the head. So not only just $250,000 in issue paid business, but I'd like it to come from 25 producers or less. Mm. Um, I don't need a bajillion people, right, writing one app a month to necessarily hit that goal. I not only want that income for myself, but I want to change my agent's life financially. So if I have $250,000 coming in a month from, let's say, 25 agents, everyone's doing at least 10 grand. Right. That's right. good money. I mean, depending on who you're talking to. But for the most part, average across America, I don't care if you live here in New Jersey or in California or in the Midwest, 150 grand a year is not too shabby. And you'll just go up from there. Um, so I think that's a really important goal that I write down every day. Yeah. Haven't hit it yet, but, you know. Dude, way, way. <laughs> Matt Timmon writes in and says, this guy is legit. So, so, so dude, you're, uh, you're already making it. Oh, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it, man. We're already responding and excited. And, and, and so this event is something that, cause I could ask you questions all day. I've already learned valuable nuggets. I know our audience will, I know our agents will. Appreciate uh, it. What was it about? Because I've met so many cool people that have really wanted to get behind this thing. And it's been, it's been super humbling. What was it about this whole deal? That's in 15 days, eight hours. That yeah, man. Really, really made you kind of want to get behind it and support it. And you know, your whole group and Ryan, all you guys have been great. Yeah. A couple of things. Like I've been following you like silently for a while and secure agent mentor. And I love what you guys are doing. You, you know, it seems like the ultimate hand holding especially of maybe a brand new agent, you know, here's your E&O, here's your leads. These are all the carriers. You really can't fail. Right. So that was one. Uh, two, I really wanted to bring my agents and Ryan, myself and the rest of TTC kind of wanted to do a giant meetup and what better place to do it. Right. than this conference and three, man, you can't not get motivated by listening to Grant Cardone speak. I don't care what your view is on him. I did a coaching call with him like a year and a half ago. I'm on Cardone U. That guy is unbelievable. So between him, I've listened to Tim Story speak before, Ray Lewis, like you can't ask for a better lineup. So those three things, man, the camaraderie, I love you guys and what you're about. And uh, your speakers are unbelievable. You know, it's no bullshit. 
Thanks, brother. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Like, if, if that don't get somebody jacked up and hyped up for this event, man. Do it. No Come one. To the VIP party. party. Yeah. I got a yeah. ticket already. <laughs> That's truth, Pete. I love it, man. I love it. I, I love the interaction. This is one of the reasons I love Be Live. You can actually randomly oh, show. Oh, what's up, Jonathan? Jonathan's from Jersey, too. Nice, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's what? a referral machine. That is awesome. That is yeah. so cool. That is so cool. You know what? We 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 all need uh, we all need referrals. So that's I uh, thank you for the kind words, John. That's awesome, buddy. That's really cool. So for those that don't know you, but they're going to be at the event, and they're like, you know what? Um, I'd really like to. This dude, Pete, man, he he's he's sta he's standing out amongst the crowd, man. I, I, if they see you, number yep. one, is it cool if they grab you and pick your brain? One hundred percent. I want to meet everybody, especially if you're in our group already. I mean, we can see your face on your Facebook profile, but I want to shake hands with everybody, you know? Yeah. You seem like a super social dude that will just, just flourish in this type of environment too. So that's yeah, cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't care at all. I, I want to talk to every single person there if I could. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If they're able to grab you pick, and, and pick your brain for a second, what do you expect that they will learn from Pete? So one, not to toot my own horn, but I write about 80% of my business off of referrals. So if, if you're a lead monger, I mean, that's all well and good. And it's great to have leads and I believe in them too. But my philosophy is your leads should be supplementing your referrals. And it also breaks down your lead cost. Like some leads out there may cost 30 bucks, which aren't so bad. Some leads brand new may cost $80, you know, depending on the vendor. So if you want to really bring your lead cost down per capita, turn that lead into five leads and now you're only paying, you know, 10 bucks or $5 or whatever the math is behind that. So uh, one is referrals and two is really planning your financial strategy around this business. I made enough mistakes money wise in terms of like buying the fancy watch right off the bat or like the car or um, not reinvesting a heavy amount of money into my business. I always preach to my agents and to others that ask, you should be saving at least 40 to 45% of your commissions towards taxes and other expenses that accumulate within your business. And if you're bad at it, take your advance and jump it down to 60% and then save your release money or whichever way you want to do it. Um, but those two things, referrals and actually managing uh, the financial aspects of your business, definitely ask away. Dude, I, I love the uh, I love the strategy portion, especially the referrals, because I feel like a lot, of, a lot of agents leave a lot of referrals on the table. For, to yeah. begin. But also the... Uh, well, okay, let me ask you this. What's your what's your referral question? Because we've so, all got one that we enjoy and we like. Yeah. So uh, I try to ask for referrals throughout the entirety of the presentation. It's not like one process. And, and I'll give you a, a little secret away. One is obviously the, the training wheels pitch is using the beneficiaries and explaining the policy to said beneficiary, what it means to be a beneficiary. And then referrals from initial pitch to close to the thank you card that I write, to my six month review with the client, every point in time I'm asking them consistently, do you know somebody that's in the same financial situation that you are in? People hang out with people usually on the same level, maybe a little above, maybe a little below, right? So if you got a $500 a month IUL out of somebody, right? They probably know 10 other people that are in the same financial situation that can afford a $500 a month IUL. Right. Or that just bought a house or just had a baby. So use that question throughout the entirety of the process. And you should be averaging at least three to five referrals in every sit anyway. Um, ask. Don't be afraid. You know. Yeah. Yep. I love that. That's strong, buddy. Thank you for sharing that. That's cool. That's, yeah, that's, sure. that's some amazing nuggets that everyone can learn from. We can all improve, all get better. You know, I love that. Uh, for, from a strategy stand, strand, standpoint, you mentioned a few things that I necessarily maybe had heard, hadn't heard. And it's just, it's, it's, it's unique. Um, what along the way kind of, kind of led you to look to learning some of these strategy nuggets that can be extremely valuable to new agents. Yeah. So I, I was constantly learning like my first, I mean, from, from interning to captivity, quote unquote, to my first year or two being independent, I was not afraid to ask other people questions that, that were more successful than I was. I don't have that big of an ego. I'm pretty confident, but I'm not that cocky, right? To just say, I'm going to go off on my own and just rip it because you need help, which is why the whole trip tips, tricks and closers things came to fruition because 
there's not enough information out there for new agents, right? Or there is, but no one's shoving it in their face. Um, so I tried to gain a little nugget or two from everybody that I met or talked to and then turned it into my own pitch, you know, taking something from Dave and Sam and Larry and Mo and Curly and whoever else, right? And putting it in this box <laughs> and developing it into my process because I wasn't the best at final expense pitches. I wasn't the best initially at gaining referrals. I wasn't the best at closing over a $250 a month deal. I was scared to ask for that. Um, so I learned all of those aspects and then kind of created my own philosophy about it. I, I, I like that, especially that you're willing to share and that, you know what, you're, you, you realize that, hey, I don't need to hide, you know, I don't need to hide all this stuff. If it helps other people and we can improve this industry, you know, why not? I think, I think, it's, I think it's gold. If you had to describe Pete, in one word, just randomly, you probably maybe been asked this before, maybe not. What would that word be? Motivated. Motivated, man. I love that. Full blown. That uh, is good. Like I don't need conferences so like motivated. this, but I want them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as being too fired up. No doubt. And thank you, Kevin. Appreciate the kind words, buddy. So, dude, what's got you so motivated, man? Because you can tell you are an energetic, motivated. Maybe it's the goals. Maybe it's the vision. What is it? The industry, man. Like, um, you know, I, like I said, I was never a nine to fiver. I can't imagine, you know, spending every day in an office and like punching a clock and only getting 70 grand a year or whatever, you know, people are making. Um, and the industry is, gives you so much. There's no reason not to be motivated. Like the whole game is numbers anyway. So if you have a shit week in the field and you had 10 sits and they all said no, maybe next week you have 10 sits and nine of them said yes. Like the numbers always play out. So there's no real reason to get down on yourself. And if you are and you're in a rut, find someone like me or like you or anybody else that you can kind of latch on to for a little while and let us pass that motivation on to you because there's no reason to be negative in this industry. No reason. Totally. More millionaires in the financial services and insurance industry than any other industry on planet Earth. Yeah. And it's and I always say it's not easy, but sure as hell is simple. Yeah. You know, if yes. you find a process and follow it, it's simple. It may not be easy day to day. You might be tired. You may not eat in the field or, you know, pee or whatever the case may be. Right. Long days, long nights. Um but the entire process from start to finish, from day one in the field to retirement, right? Quote unquote, is is yeah. simple. When when you were uh, when you were at, in, in 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 your peak out in the field times, how many? What what number of uh, appointments did you generally run? So I was trying to do a lot of travel trips, um, uh, not to. Uh, negate where people live or something like that. But there are gold mines throughout this country um, that are maybe easier to sell in. So I spent a lot of time talking with agents that were in certain areas and would travel to those places and spend like a long travel trip. One, maybe the area was easier, but if you post up in a hotel for 96 hours and you have no distractions, no girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, kids, whatever the case may be. And all you're there to do is write business. You will kill it. And sometimes you just need that. Um, so I was doing that. I would probably get anywhere from 25 to 35 appointments in those um, Thursday to Sunday spans of time, which was usually my long weekend, either Thursday to Sunday or Friday to Monday. Uh, I would go fly out somewhere or drive somewhere. And uh, I would write anywhere from 10 to 25, probably thousand in that span of time. Uh, granted, not all of it was, you know, issue paid, but uh, a heavy amount was. I think my placement at the time doing travel trips was over 90 percent um, because why bother write an app if it's not going to pay out? Right. It's stupid. Uh, yeah. So I would say 10 to 25 K and I would do that like maybe once or twice a month. Um, you travel, travel yeah. Travel trips. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, obviously write like referrals and friends and stuff like that at home. But when you come home with a stack of apps, you know, 25 K might be 70 applications, depending on what you're pitching. Right. And depending on the income of the area that you're going into, you might just be pitching $30 a day or $30 a month all day long. Right. 
So I'd come home with a stack of apps like this because not a lot of the carriers had e-apps or they weren't that good, you know, five, six years ago. Um, so all of them were on paper. So I was doing amendments and faxing them in. So I would spend my weeks doing that and then set up a call time and do it all again. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. My goal at the time when I was independent was like between 20 and $25,000 a month, no matter how I had to do it. I like it. And so you, those travel trips, you would just do over the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 why, why the weekend? Because I know that's going to be a question that comes up. Yeah. So uh, little nugget, the best cold day, in my opinion, is Wednesday. It's like hump day. People are feeling it. They're like, oh, we're two days away from Friday. We're two days away from the shittiest day of the week, which is Monday for most of these people, right? So yeah. call on Wednesday. And then as I was traveling, I would call on Thursday and set appointments for Friday, weeks over. They don't care if they're sitting there with a beer or relaxing on the couch. They'll talk to you for a half hour. You can do your pitch. It's very relaxing. Saturday morning's probably the best sit day on the entire planet. And then Sunday and or Monday would be like spillover days. If I miss somebody or I got no showed, I could go door knock them or whatever the case may be. But really consolidated appointments and a huge phone day on uh, on Wednesday. You mentioned travel trips and, and, I, and I just like that. I love that you're willing to travel no matter what it takes. Dude, I mean, you're so motivated. You'll do whatever. What was your and maybe I'm giving a little secret away. Yeah, yeah. What was your favorite city when you were doing that? So, all right. You, know, you got a favorite, right? I know you do. I do. I do. I probably still here. I'll. This is a uh, a stack of leads from my favorite city. Oh. So, um, I would say for anybody in Snohomish County, Washington, you are sitting on gold out there. I uh, Snohomish County. It was like in the middle of nowhere. I went there in like December one time, which was like the worst mistake of my life. I rented a Prius because it was cheap and I almost died like 60 times. Um, but, but I wrote a ton of business, so it was worth it. Um, some, some carriers were limited. Like I only had like five or six carriers at the start for being independent. And I think out of those six, I could only write two or three. So that part was hard. But it was like almost always a yes. You people, if anyone watching this lives in Snohomish County, you are the nicest humans in the country, I think. You would door knock people and they would be like, yeah, come on. And I was like, what is happening? I'm from New Jersey. People would shoot you if that, if that were the case. So uh, really oh. like Washington State. Yeah, you bring people Starbucks, man. They open the door. Oh, dude, you bring me Starbucks and I'll open any door. <laughs> <laughs> I love Starbucks, dude. You know what? This guy is so cool that he gave, he gave he just gave away his favorite spot in the country. I mean, maybe it's because I asked him live on video. I almost feel bad now because like, <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Oh, if you replace your policy. Don't feel bad. That is <laughs> awesome and so funny. That was like probably the best question I've asked with all of these live interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good, man. That's good. Uh, any other yeah. help, helpful advice for agents that are like, you know what? A travel trip actually doesn't sound like a bad idea. Maybe you're just struggling to get leads. I know with mortgage protection, and even final expense, there's areas that are harder and more expensive to get leads. So it's yeah, like, yeah. And I'm not too keen on the final expense market anymore. I, I kind of sway away from that and now write solely mortgage protection. I'll like supplement with final expense. But I know for mortgage protection, like you don't want to write. I mean, I'm in New Jersey and I don't want to bash my own state, but like it's kind of hard here sometimes because you're seeing mortgages for six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars. And unless they're qualified and maybe you're writing like a fully underwritten term product, you ain't getting simplified issue out of that, right? For the most part. And if for some reason you are, and maybe you're you're pitching them to do half of the payment or something like that, right? Paying off 15 years out of the 30 year mortgage, whatever your pitch is. Um, it's going to run them three, four, five hundred dollars a month for a simplified issue term product. So like um, yeah. higher income states tend to be more difficult for mortgage protection. Um, another little nugget for you guys out there. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, yeah. What's, the what's the sweet spot mortgage wise, balance wise? Um, I really like anything under 400 K. Like if you're pitching um, houses, home equity loans, or um, refis, because all those can come back in mortgage protection, right? Requests. 
uh, between 100 and 400,000 is really nice. Um, I do sell a decent amount of fully underwritten because it's term and it's cheap and you don't want people to replace it. Granted, if you're doing like return a premium or they're sick, yeah, simplified issue is the way to go. But I do sell a lot of uh, fully underwritten, maybe in conjunction with a whole life or UL or something of that nature. But um, if you're pitching people in between 100 and 400,000, you're going to get a lot of yeses because it's affordable for them and it makes sense. Um, but if you're looking to do a travel trip, definitely don't make my mistake and save up literally, I'm no joke, $2,000 to make the travel trip because, and just set it, put it in an account, put it under your mattress and cash, whatever, but two grand. And the reason for that is you never want to be worried about your finances while you're on the trip. Right. So whatever you have to do, if you're selling friends and family, if you still maybe have a part time job and you're doing this, whatever the case may be, save 2K. One, it's for your leads. Two, it's for your travel. Traveling is not cheap anymore unless you get rewards points or something of that nature. And three, when you're there, your mindset should just be writing, 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 writing business. And you got to stay healthy when you're on the road, too. You shouldn't be eating like McDonald's just because it's a dollar. Right. So uh, make sure you save up that 2K before you go on your initial trip. Yeah, but 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 Taco Bell, Taco Bell's okay though, right? Taco Bell's okay. Yeah, in in moderation, right? Cheesy right. potato. Yeah, but that, that's what ends up happening. We go on these trips, or we go hours from home, or we spend the day traveling the state, and we end up eating garbage and soda and energy drinks and just oh. tons of coffee. And it just, I mean, it, honestly, it affects your personality. It affects your attitude. It affects your ability to stay hyped up and excited and energetic and your, your yourself all day. Like that's a, actually a, that's something I strongly, I mean, yeah, the problem is I love Taco Bell. But yeah, I do too. Especially like after midnight, you know, obviously. But <laughs> I, I told the guys in the studio, I said, man, I think, I think, talk, I think Taco Bell's got like dollar tacos today uh, for Wednesday. And they're like, really? You know, like, <laughs> I think they're like a buck something every day, but yeah, just get a case of them. It's not a big deal. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, you have been incredible. One of our best interviews. You've been awesome, man. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to the conference and meeting you in person finally. Okay. For those agents that are on, oh, I'm a two questions real quick. Yeah. Number one, for a new agent that's struggling, help them out real quick. If you can speak to that new agent, we get a lot of new agents, watch our content, watch our stuff. Uh, what would you What would you like to say to them? Yeah. If you're struggling in business, do a couple things. One, start building your own content base. Content's king, man. I'm posting videos, not only for agents, but also for clients. There's so many misconceptions about life policies in general or critical illness or disability or long-term care. People don't know about them. There's no general you know, rule of thumb for any of these products. So post your own content and start getting people involved. Um, and then like, if you're struggling, and you need to write business, talk to your friends and your family. I mean, like, it's like, a, it sounds like a no, no, but if you know what you're talking about first, first, you got to get competent, right? Don't, don't go pitching your friends and family. If you have no idea what you're doing, but <laughs> learn and then go talk to them. They're your biggest support network. And you should have enough empathy when you're talking to them to actually care about them. What's up, Sam Wolf. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Dude, I love that you said that there's so many agents scared to work the warm market. You know, my brother may not love me anymore, but what happens if something happens to your brother and you got to deliver the news and you were right there and you could have helped and you could have done something and you didn't, you're going to feel right. way, way worse down the road than you will right now by approaching them. So I love that you said that. Yeah. And are you going to be able to live with that? I mean, sometimes you have to have a hard conversation with like a brother, a sister, a cousin, a high school buddy, just bring it up because they'll thank you for it in the long run, you know? Really, really will. It's so true. We were talking about that earlier where, you know, you'll get a lot of objections early in a call or early in an appointment. And then after you, or they'll say, hey, I'm just shopping. I'm not doing anything today. And then an hour later they bought and they're thanking you for selling them, you know? And it's like the, the same way with your warm market and your family. And so dude, that, that's good. Okay, last question. Thank you yeah. for helping with one agents do. Last question. If an agent's on the fence, why should they get to 8% nation? Oh my gosh. I, I don't care what you have to do. go sell a policy today and go because the motivation that you're going to get and like, maybe you're not a hoorah type agent. I don't know people that aren't in this industry. Everyone should be so psyched all the time or else, you know, it's very hard to be successful, but um, the motivation alone, 
is going to be worth the price of admission or travel or whatever you have to do to get there. And second thing, I'm going to be there. Cody is going to be there. All the leaders of the industry are going to be there well above my stature, you know, so I'm going to still learn from the best, whether it's a speaker on the panel, whether I'm seeing somebody at the VIP party, it doesn't matter if you're paying. I, I think I booked my flight and my Airbnb and stuff today. It might be like 1500, two grand. I don't know, but you're paying to take back one or two nuggets. That's going to turn into $30,000 in premium. It's a no brainer. Just go. Dude, I love it. You heard it here first from the humbled, talented, and motivated <laughs> Mr. Pete Fournier, dude. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, Cody. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Appreciate you being on. You have to, number one, get to this event. And when you do, you've got to grab Pete. You got to shake his hand. You got to get a picture with him. You got to pick his brain. I'm telling you what, the dude has already proven in the last 35, 40 minutes longer than we expected to go, but we've had so much fun that the dude knows his stuff. The dude knows this business and he is honored to help people. You can tell he wants to help people. That's his personality. He's got a big heart. He's so enthusiastic and he's motivated, man. And, and, and you know what? He's here to motivate you. So, hey, if you haven't got your seat, go to 8percentnation.com because this thing will be here before you know it. 15 days, eight hours, five minutes, 26 seconds and counting. You got to get there with us. Pete, awesome job. Thanks for being on, buddy. Love it, man. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, bro. We'll see you at Nissan Stadium and everybody else. We'll see you in Nashville at Nissan Stadium here in a couple of weeks. Take it easy.